Now, uh, this is not my favorite figure from this event, but everyone else's favorite figure. <laughs> Why? There we go. Hi and welcome back to the channel, Steven right here with your figure event coverage this time around. We had SmileFest 2024 which took place last weekend, 22nd and 23rd of June 2024 in Tokyo and apparently the same event will repeat again in August on the 3rd and 4th in Osaka, Japan. For today's coverage, I'm making use of googleberries.com. They have done all the hard work labeling every figure, their names, the origin, and so on. So for those of you who want to check out the pictures yourself, yeah, head to this website. I am crediting them for putting in all the hard work, right? Okay, and now this is a list of figure companies. We have Good Smile Company where I will only cover scale figures and pop-up rates because, you know, uh, Nendorot is not a main focus of this channel and there are like, 80 or 90 of them, which is absurd. <laughs> yeah, same story for Max Factory. We have a few scale figures and I'm skipping past Plamex, Plametia, which is action figures, model kits, and also Figmas. Now, without wasting any further time, let's begin with Aniplex and Claynell. Alright, so with Aniplex, we don't really have any new announcements over here. These are mostly updates for from whatever they announced back in Wonder Festival both earlier this year and late last year. So now this figure of Osada Pecora and Marsh Kirillite uh, FGO collaboration has finally been painted. Back then it was unpainted in one fest a few months ago. As a FGO collector, I am not sure if I want this figure to be honest. I think I'm more than willing to skip it. Uh, yeah, the next one over here, we have 9S from Nier Automata, also an update since the uh, 2B figure is already on pre-order. Once again, I don't see this one selling as well as 2B. The next one here, no updates on this one. The same Morgan Berserker figure from FGO, still in grey prototype stage. Up next, we have R3 from R3 My Dear Moments, I'm not sure what is that, but Based on the title, R3 My Dear Moments, it sounds like an uh, yeah, a LN, a light novel, or even an Iroge game. It sounds like that to me, based on the title alone. Yeah, I know nothing about her. Alright, next one, what do we have over here? Okay, uh, Hojo Tokiyuki from the Elusive Samurai. A Shota, a kid. What do we have? Ah, uh, very appropriate title. Kaori Miyazono again. Yup, yeah, again. How many figures of her has it been already? And they're making one again. <laughs> uh, are we going to get a piano next to her? I think very unlikely, right? I would really love a figure of Miyazono Kaori with a piano prop next to her, but obviously that is going to be expensive as hell. I still wish that someone would do it. Right, uh, alright. There is an announcement of three scale figures from Bochi the Rock. I love it that Bochi the Rock is getting so much recognition from anime figure manufacturers. Even when there is no season 2, I think. I don't think there is a season 2. I could be wrong though. But uh, given that not so many figure brands are taking on this series, maybe there is a season 2. Like, I don't follow anime news that much. I watch a lot of anime, but I don't follow the industry news. Maybe there is a season 2, who knows. Because more than often, if a seasonal anime is one single season and done and dusted, they won't do anything else, then it makes no sense to make skill figures off because people forget their seasonal waifus. Yeah, people will lose interest in the figure when it comes out 9 months or 12 months later. Wait. And yeah, that is all for Aniplex and then Claynell, which was formerly known as Revolve. They have only one single skill figure over here. I believe they announced the same thing in the previous event, so no updates at all. We have yeah, a Unicorn ve a Wedding version from Azalein. Yep, this was announced in the previous event. Now moving on to the next figure brand, DMM Factory, which is a very new brand. They have just started appearing, I think, last year in Wonder Festival. So DMM Factory has some updates, but I'm not sure if they announced any new figures at all. So here we have a trio of figures from Oshinoko. They are already painted, but I don't like how this photo or this display set over here is kind of dark. 
I'm unable to appreciate what their faces look like. And bear in mind that the photos I'm about to show you guys, they are not of the best quality. Okay, uh, this is Albedo from Overlord. And this is actually one of my favorite Albedo figures so far. I'm actually quite surprised that there has been so many figures of her by Fulvio Phoenix especially. And also Fat Company, I think. Anyways, so many scale figures of her, but none of them are in her armor. Now, this is something I would love to have, even though I'm not interested in an albedo figure, but something with armor, with weapons, which is totally my kind of thing. That is why I own so many FGO figures and even God Eater figures in the first place. I love anime female characters with huge weapons and armor. Yeah. Also explains why I love Black Rock Shooter, by the way. I love big guns, big swords, and so on. So, I'm actually paying attention to this figure of Albedo over here, but no updates since the previous event. Next one over here, we have, yeah, uh, Spice and Wolf. This is the lolly version of something. Uh, not very attractive. Next one, we have Sukoya Kana from Niji Sanji. Alright. I'm not exactly following this, uh, you know, a uh, VTuber and virtual stuff, virtual idol stuff. And I actually questioned why do Gen Z and Gen Alpha kids nowadays, they like all this VTuber so much, right? To me, at least to me, I know this is an unpopular opinion. To me, it is just a GIF image, an animated image moving around with voice behind it, right? <laughs> and then there were people who told me that at least... No, the streamers behind these virtual characters, they don't have to rely on selling their bodies to become popular, which is a huge problem in the world of content creators in general. Like, we have women relying on showing their cleavages or how pretty their faces are to become popular, and then everyone else average looking, yeah, they stand less of a chance to succeed in online media con uh, creation. And it is this VTuber concept where they don't have to show their actual face where they stand an equal chance against everyone else in becoming successful as a streamer or content creator. I suppose that it makes sense after people explain it to me on why it is popular, I can sort of understand why it is a thing. Uh, here we have a Hatsune Miku Gozu Uri version by Art by Gozu Uri. Alright, too many Miku figures and this one, a lot of Freely stuff. I love frills on dresses, but this is a bit mm, not my kind of Miku figure. Uh, yeah, based on this artwork over here. At least she has really nice colors. Up next, we have a bunch of original art figures where DMM Factory is also making. This is Toshishita Kanojo from Art by Nabi. Alright, and they are showing us artwork next to the figure, which is really helpful. At least we get to see what the figure looks like finally. This is like a cuter version of Oshino Shinobu with that black dress over there. Alright, and then here we have art by Amagasa Yun. Nekomimi Girl. Uh, it is a bit different, isn't it? In this figure, maybe it is smartphone photos being the fault over here, right? This looks like an image taken with a smartphone because of how wide angle it is. I mean, when you compare this image to this artwork over here, this image, it feels like, you know, her hair, her forehead over here is really huge. But I won't be making any uh, early judgment over here because this is possibly a smartphone camera distorting the image because of a wide angle lens. Just don't use wide angle lens to take photos of figures, I mean, because, yeah, it distorts the look of the figure. Now, this one over here, the face is definitely elongated, the head. Alright, next one over here, we have Toshishita Kanojo, again, art by Rangu. Yes, it is most likely smartphone camera's fault over here. Same thing again in this comparison. Now, you compare this artwork over here with this uh, figure. Yeah, once again, the head, the head region appears elongated. Okay, so... It is a bit unfortunate that they are not using a proper camera to photograph all these figures. Okay, uh, that's the thing. The image don't scroll all the way to the end. What do we have up next? More artwork figures. Art by Oshio. Mm. 
I could have mistaken this for an Azalin character, you know? And here we have Toshiwe Kanojo art by Wata. Oh, this looks great. Even though it is all black in color, I would love to see more colors, but the character design is great. And the last two figures over here, art by Piromizu. I love this maid a lot. I love the character design. A lot of details around her hair. But figures by DMM Factory are not really cheap based on what we saw in the recent uh, figure news week where one of their figures went on pre-order. Here we have another artwork. Uh, Maid Mason. Oh, okay. Maid Mason. Heard of it. And based on this artwork, very lovely. I love it. And I believe that is all for DMM Factory. Yes, that is all. Oh, there is a what? There is one more over here. There we go. Also art by Piromizu. Uh, this one I don't like it that much because it is too decent. Slight lewdness would be perfect. Okay. Uh, that is all for DMM Factory. I don't know if I sound weird on my mic over here because I am not feeling that well. I actually had a flu over the last weekend. Should have been a bit better by now at the time of recording, but I might sound weird or stuffy a bit, not with my voice. Okay, uh, the next one over here, freeing. So we have a bunch of one by four skills. The first one, this is very obvious, Megumi Kato. Just that I can't make any early judgment on all of these figures because of how the images are distorted from the camera they used. Okay, uh, next one here. Oh, I love this so much. Original art by Mimosa. Uh, Hoshizaki Ryu, bunny version. I love the outfit on this one. Okay, and uh, next one, another... Okay, Aero Bunny, tentative name. They have not confirmed the name yet. Art by Mignon. And then here we have Arrow Bunny again, art by Sato Pote. Pote, right? <laughs> okay. And then what do we have? Oh, this looks horrid. Must be, must be the distortion on the image. From City Hunter, we have Nogami Saeko. Uh, for those of you classic lovers, I think people, those of you over age of 40 might know something about City Hunter. This is really old stuff and I know nothing about it. And just by looking at their character design, I don't feel like watching it at all. <laughs> Next one over here is this Tenshino. <laughs> Hoshino Guri. Oh, Martian successor Nadeshiko. I heard that the anime is kind of screwed up in a way. I heard. <laughs> Alright, very old. This is from a very old series, right? Okay, next one, what do we have? Ah... Silpha from the Seventh Prince. I heard that a season two has been announced, and I'm somewhere at episode seven or eight. I need to finish it. The anime has just finished airing. Between this and the Bandai version, Bandai Vivic Net version, twenty thousand yen, I think. Which one will you get? Yeah, depends on the budget, I suppose. Next one over here, uh, is this Nagatoro? No, this is Kurose Minami Bunny version from Dolphin Wave. I swear, that is Nagatoro-san, man. <laughs> yeah, Nagatoro's bust size isn't that big, right? That should have been a giveaway. Right, next one, what do we have? Uh, Izumi Kiri from Dolphin Wave as well. I know nothing about it. And, okay, I'm a bit confused over here. Now, they are announcing Aisaka Taiga Tiger version. And if I looked at whatever that was written on that tag next to the figure on display... Price unconfirmed, release date unconfirmed. What? I thought this figure has already been released a while ago, but if Free Ink is making a new version after making some small changes, maybe a version 2.0, I don't know because the stockings are still intact. That is great news for figure collectors, but this ought to piss off some of the existing owners of the current Taiga figure because the current version is plagued with a lot of quality control issues, especially around her ear and the hair. The paint work on that is terrible, right? I don't know what happened, but if Free Ink is re-releasing the same thing, man, for those of you who skipped the figure, this is your second chance and a really good one. We have another Taiga figure over here. Yeah, Aisaka Taiga Bunny version, which by right, this should be on pre-order a long time ago. I have no idea. Is, is Free Ink displaying the same thing? that is already on pre-order or that has already been released, but yet at the same time, once again, the tag next to the figure over there 
on the bottom left corner, it says that price unconfirmed. So I'm confused. If you know something, let me know down in the comments below. Next one over here, we have new versions of Yami and Momo. Fantastic, man. Uh, there's nothing quite wrong with the current version of Yami and Momo at 1x4 scale. But, you know, in general, I prefer 1x4 scale figures to be standing rather than sitting because, you know, it makes them feel bigger and that is what we're getting over here. Yeah, Yami and Momo. <laughs> Her bunny ears look really huge over here, but once again, the image was being stretched. I sold mine. I used to own Momo, the one with stockings. I sold mine to a Canadian friend. I still have a bit of lingering regrets from selling that Momo figure of mine at 1x4 scale because that one with stockings is very rare and expensive now. But now that we have this pair of new figures, hey, I'll just wait for these, I suppose. Hopefully, I can afford it by the time they are released. Okay, uh, next one. Here's the weird part. Same thing with this Yami figure and this Momo figure. This Momo was exactly the one I owned back then. The one I sold. Now they are getting new figures. Are they going to repaint it in different colors? But man, they are really milking <laughs> to love Go because of how popular it is in Japan. Yeah. Moving on to the next one. This is quite a bit of an oddball. Okay, uh, the anime, the Cafe Therese and its goddesses. I watched it, I loved it, and I heard that they are getting season 2, which is likely why they are getting figures now. Okay, uh, 1x4 skill, Howoji Akane. Yeah, the figure looks elongated, right? Once again, the fault of a smartphone camera. Way too wide. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is a bit out of character for her. I mean, they should have placed her in that uh, cafe uniform which is in the girl behind her but in this uh, bikini or is it lingerie looks a bit weird it doesn't fit her character very well next one over here uh, okay Ono Shiragiku from the same series if you haven't watched the anime please go and watch it I loved it okay uh, next one we have Toki Bunny version from Senran Kagura New Link yeah the next few are all Senran Kagura stuff we have Senko Bunny version, and then also, wow, this one barely have, has any cloth covering her opai. And the body proportion, the anime physics is just so weird over here. Okay, her name is Gecko Bunny version. I don't remember anything anymore. I watched the anime adaptation, which was like a short job episodes, but I don't remember anything. Okay, and up next, we have Nikkei. Okay, uh, Helm from Nikkei. Transparent cloth. Okay, uh, the thing with wet transparent cloth look in anime figures, I'm not a big fan of them because depending on how they are being executed, sometimes it feels like wax. Yeah, candle wax are covering a figure and that looks pretty weird to me. But of course, every figure brand, they have their own way of implementing it on a figure. In some brands, they do it better than others. Next one over here, another Nikkei figure. Her name is Rupi. Come on, that metal rod needs to be longer. <laughs> it needs to be longer. I love the pole dancing pose like what they did with New Jersey from Azalin. I love this pose as well, but if only the metal rod is a bit longer, man. Up next, ah, oh, finally, 2B from Nier Automata. Like, you know, uh, third-party resin figure brands are making 50 2B figures a year. And that might be an understatement. And most of them are at 1x4 skill. Finally, freeing the sites to act. In fact, besides Blue Archive and Nikkei, which is arguably the main highlight of this Small Fest event, the next biggest thing is probably Near Automata, which is like finally, after so many years, yeah. In my opinion, the best genuine to be figure so far in this event is the one by Max Factory, which we'll take a look at in a moment. This one is not too bad for those of you who want a 1x4 skill, yet you insist on buying licensed stuff only. Next one, yeah, of course, uh, 1A. I'm not a big fan of 1A in terms of character design. And we have Saber Altar, Ultra Pendragon Altar. Just a matter of time. We all knew this one is coming, right? Uh, yeah, I think this was announced in the previous event even. And of course, Saber Lily. 
This is like the same exact figure Aquamarine released a few years ago, the same pose, <laughs> and now they are just upscaling it to 1x4 scale. I believe that is all for free ink. Yes, that is all. Let me double check for a second by scrolling to the bottom. Yep. Okay, moving on to the next one, we have Phoenix Full View, where they announced only three new figures in this event. Okay. We have Ilya and Miyu, right? Her name? Yeah, Miyu. From Fate, Khalid, Prisma, Ilya. My favorite one is still the one with barely any clothes on by Amakuni and Hobby Japan, which is expensive AF and probably very illegal in some countries. I heard that Canada also does not allow people to import lolly figures with little clothes on. That is what I heard. <laughs> Fortunately, in Malaysia, in my country, uh, it is the exact opposite where if you buy a figure with a giant opai and barely any clothes on, yeah, the moral police are going to conf confiscate it at the customs department. But for Lolly, I think it is not an issue, oddly enough. <laughs> okay, uh, next one over here, the third one, we have Sai Gyoji Yuyuko from Toho Project. And now as a figure collector, I don't think I'm going to touch Toho stuff. Azalane, I might buy a few. Blue Archive and Nikkei, I'm going to buy a few figures. I love their character designs, but Toho, no, I'm not touching them. Alright, and that is all for Phoenix. Yeah, next one here, Ask Fire, which is Sega's premium figure division, in case you are not aware of. We have a new Hatsune Miku figure over here, Aki Ryoko version art by Go Moon. And yeah, very generic, uh, boring pose. I call this the Verka pose, short for version Hajime Katoki, which is... A Gunpla thing, Gundam kit. So whenever there is a Gunpla that is master grade and it is designed by Hajime Katoki, yeah, the box art of the Gunpla is like the Gundam just standing there and doing nothing, which is why I call it a Verka pose. <laughs> okay, uh, and then we have a trio of figures from Kaiju number 8. Now this figure of Shinomiya Kikoru looks really weird. The face is really weird, but at the same time, I couldn't zoom in on her face at least in this website. I hope they fix the face. Otherwise, the one made by Kotobukiya looks a lot better. However, when it comes to Ashiro Mina, I think this version is better than the Kotobukiya version. Yeah. Uh, at least that the skills match. The Kotobukiya Art FX series is 1x8 skill, and Ask Fire is deciding to go with 1x8 instead of 1x7, so you can mix and match with the Kotobukiya version. Great news. I prefer 1x7, but at the same time, I am glad that they are matching the skill over here. Yeah. And the third one, we have Hoshina Soshiro. I think this one, between this and the Kotobukiya version, which went on pre-order just two weeks ago, I'm not sure which is better. My favorite among the three in this set is Mina. Alright, and I believe that is all for S Fire. Yep. Next, Hobby Stock, where they announced three figures and all three are Hatsune Miku. This figure was from One Fest previously, finally painted. And man, anyone of you want to guess how much is this going to cost? I am predicting 40,000 yen. Yes, 40,000 yen because she looks amazing. And with this level of detail, this is not going to come cheap from a Japanese company. Next one, we have Miku Expo 2023 VR version. Now, this one... Not, not really to my taste. I like this a lot. This one, not so much. <laughs> also from the previous event, from One Fest, now they have painted it. And the third one over here, a new version, Expo 10th Anniversary version, art by Iwato, which is not to my liking either. Next company, Good Smile Company. Yeah, let's check out the scale figures first. So, of course, we have a new Hatsune Miku figure every year, more like every few months. This is Hatsune Miku 0x27 Eternal Stream, whatever that means. But I really do like how they are making figures of the OG Miku again, the original design, how Miku was supposed to look like 10, 15 years ago, you know? This is her original outfit, and yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, this could be 25,000 yen, between 20 to 25k, my guess. Next one over here, okay, this is from One Fest previously. Freewen has been painted. Uh, unfortunately, from Good Smile, a lot of stiff competition and there are other brands doing better figures of 
free run because this one is a bit on the boring side but I really like that diorama base over there and in fact if there is a reason why I want to choose this one over other brands it is because it, of the diorama base very photogenic for a photographer like me next one we have okay <laughs> one of the lowest effort to be figures scale figures like max factory version is so much better let's hope good small sells this for cheap yeah max factory is going to give uh ask 25 or 30 k for their version let's hope this one goes for fifteen thousand yen <laughs> am i asking for too little i would say 15 16 000 yen seriously because uh, Good Smile was able to price their Marine Kitagawa swimsuit version at 12,000 yen. This could be doable at 16,000 yen, I think. Next one over here, this is an interesting one because we have uh, Lloyd and Anya together as one set, likely to be under 20,000 yen. A few months ago, uh, Yor and Anya were released. Yeah, uh, the one by Good Smile. And that one was pretty cheap. Now we have... Anya and Lloyd again. So if you were to buy both, buy that your forger figure by Good Smile and also buy this one by Good Smile, then you have twins. You have two Anya figures. <laughs> I understand why Good Smile decided to pair uh, Anya with Lloyd because if this was Lloyd alone without Anya next to him, it won't sell. They are not going to sell many units. So I understand the logic behind including Anya, but when you display both, yeah, you have twins over there, twins of Anya. So it is a bit weird at the same time. Uh, next one over here, Blue Archive, Mika. I'm not sure if I will pick this one up. I might skip this one. I'm not exactly a big fan of floating, levitating post figures. This reminds me of that, uh, yeah, God Madoka a bit by Good Smile as well. The way they support the dress from behind, you know. And next one, we have Ashen Miracle from Pretty, uh, yeah, Uma Musume Pretty Derby. A lot of Uma Musume this time around as well, but they are all updates from the previous event. Yeah. Okay, this is from Princess Connect. We dive Yui. I watched the anime like three episodes and I'm stuck there. I don't even know why I don't feel like uh, resuming it. Oh, this is really good. Kuonzaki Saika from King's Proposal. I am such a whore for details and when I see details on her outfit, oh yes, I love it so much. If not for that metal rod sticking out from her head behind her. <laughs> I hate those floating parts but we can't do anything about that. Yeah, I love this a lot. And then we have okay, Gojo and Geto from, uh, from <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen. I think the best Jujutsu Kaisen figures so far are the ones made by S. Fire, oddly enough. Yeah, Sega. I mean, look at the way they paint their outfits, their clothes. You see a lot of heavy shading. I love that. I don't see much shading in these two figures over here. Next one, we have a bunch of uh, Shin Japan Heroes Universe. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is like what Japan is well known for when it comes to superheroes. They put everything in one single figure. Yeah, this looks expensive indeed. Okay, uh, what else do we have? We have more figures at the bottom. Moving on to the next one, we have Black Rock Shooter Empress. Yeah, based on the BRS anime adaptation. Recently, this is the Hulk version. And I'm begging you guys, good smile. I'm praying that you guys do not F up this figure because I am genuinely interested. Your previous release from year 2022, I think. That was one of the worst figures of the year. No joke. Like, Good Smile Company is normally an A-tier figure to me, but that one single figure feels like something that came from a C-tier figure company. I'm not even joking. And I'm even entertaining the idea of reviewing that one just to validate my criticisms on that figure. Yeah. That figure has bargain bins like crazy over in China, in Taobao, because really, nobody wanted it. You can find one for 350 Chinese yuan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, next one over here, we have Akane from Oshinoko, date version. Uh, they did not mention a scale over here. I'm hoping this is 1x6 because it is a very simple figure. Even at 1x6, it shouldn't be too expensive. Next one over here, this is one of my favorite figures this event. Top 3 favorite. I'm not kidding over here. Uh, I mean, the one made by Neon Max, which was released back in May last month. Uh, that figure is 
insanely popular. A lot of people love that figure. I'm seeing pictures on Reddit, on Facebook, and so on. And in Taobao, that figure is not going for cheap. The price is not going down. In fact, the price is going to maintain or go higher after this. But after seeing this version by Good Smile Company, I think... Yeah, uh, I no longer feel any regrets of not pre-ordering the one by Neon Max or not even getting one. I'm not sure if I want to review the one by Neon Max, but having seen this one, I like this one a lot more and I'm more willing to skip the one made by Neon Max now. Yeah, of course, uh, the one by Neon Max is based on her original character and outfit design, but this one, I love it for that umbrella and all those cloth hanging around. Yes, bikini is not going to be as detailed as her original kimono style outfit, but that umbrella more than makes up for it. So I am really looking forward to this figure of Wakamo. Yeah, from Blue Archive. I want it so badly. Next one, we have Ichika from Blue Archive. Mm, we'll see. Uh, it is a bit on the boring side, right, the post, but we'll see what the pricing is like. Next one, oh yes. Uh, this was from the previous OneFest event, though that was only an announcement. Now we have a prototype and she is looking really good. Melusin from FGO, a must buy for me, right? I'm um, next, A2 from Nier Automata. Yeah, let's hope this one is cheap, just like uh, 2B earlier. I wonder why they didn't group 2B and A2 together earlier with the way they arranged the images. Next one, we have Shoto. Uh... I'm surprised this is by Good Smile Company because normally Bishonen figures are made by Good Smile Company's other branch, Orange Rouge. Yeah, they are in charge of all the deals, all the pretty boys. Um, next, we have a few announcements. This is Hatsune Miku Meihua Shannong version. Alright. <laughs> How many Miku figures are there? Uh, next one, ah, Blue Archive Kikyo. I told you guys in my title of today's video, Blue Archive and Nikkei are ruling this event and I'm loving every bit of it. Blue Archive again, Hina. And Blue Archive again, Ako, dress version. Okay. And finally, yeah, I announced this earlier on my page because I know there are a lot of Hongkai lovers and Genshin lovers uh, hanging out in my channel and so on. So uh, this is Firefly from Hongkai Star Rail and you guys did tell me that uh, SH Figo Arts is making a figure of Sam. Sure, the issue with that is that you know, uh, this is likely to be 1 by 7 scale, and SH Figo Arts is like 1 by 12 scale Figma size, so they don't really match up. Yeah, correct me if I am wrong, but I have always thought SH Figo Arts is Figma size. So even if SH Figo Arts is making a licensed action figure of Sam, I'm not really entertaining the idea of buying that one to display next to this Good Smile version of Firefly. I would rather buy the Good Smile version Firefly on her own and then I'll get myself a third party resin figure of Firefly together with Sam, that massive $400, $500 figure. Yeah, I would prefer to go with that. Very expensive, of course. Alright, uh, I believe that is all for Good Smile Company. Yep. Up next, Good Smile Arts Shanghai. Now, uh, this is not my favorite figure from this event, but this is possibly everyone else's favorite figure. <laughs> Why? I mean, this is just Takarada Rika from Double SS Great Man, right? Uh, Great Man, Dina Zenon, and Azalen collaboration. Alright, really nice. I love her jacket over there. The reason why this figure is a fan favorite is because of one very important detail which fortunately Good Smile Arts Shanghai paid attention to. Let me bring up the picture which is not in this website. Yeah, my Facebook page over here. There we go. That soft backside tie squishing against that metal rod over there. This post currently has 5,300 likes over 1300 shares. This is bad shit <laughs> insane. Bad shit crazy. Just that, just that S picture over there. And this is one of my most popular posts in recent months. 
Having seen this picture now, will you pre-order one? Let me know down in the comments below. Now let's get back to the coverage. Up next, we have uh, Chibi Figures Ip and Gary. I have no idea what this is and not the kind of stuff I would like to collect either. And then, oh, here we go, Nikkei. Yeah, Uncle Small asks Shanghai is in charge of a lot of Nikkei stuff. And many of my favorite figures from this event are from Good Smile Arts Shanghai. Gapi, classic vacation version. Yes, I want one, I'm getting one. It is just plain swimsuit, but this figure is so attractive to me. I'm next, Modernia from Nikkei, finally. You know, uh, back in Wonder Festival, when Good Smile announced a mod uh, Modegoid. Was it Modegoid? Or uh, was it... Uh, I can't remember what product line, but... It was an action figure, and I was very disappointed because I wanted a skill figure. Finally, I'm getting one. Very pleased with it. Yeah, the pose is a bit boring, but the details on this character in terms of design more than makes up for it. So this is on my wish list as well, together with yeah, uh, Wakamo from Blue Archive earlier, and also that Rappi figure. Up next, we have Anis. Yes, I want one. I'm getting one. Oh. I know that I have mentioned it many times, I'm not a fan of giant Opai figures, but this is borderline acceptable to me. After all, I have two or three Sonico figures back at home. Yes, I want one. Oh boy, this is a small event, but my wallet hurts, man. Up next, we have Hinata from Blue Archive. This one looks amazing as well, and I am interested. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, are there more? The weird thing about Google Berries is that they let you scroll five or five or six images and then you stop there. You need to scroll down to continue. Ah, oh. finally, do you know how many third-party resin figures of Owari are there? Yeah, at least a dozen, if not more. Finally, a, a genuine figure brand does it. Uh, I don't have a problem with third parties to make it clear. My problem with third parties is that because they use resin, those figures are crazy fragile, very fragile. I would like something that is more, you know, uh, more <laughs> durable in a way. The weird part is that they are giving us two versions over here, one with a coat and one without. And the face expressions are very different because they want to convince you to buy both. Very evil, very smart. <laughs> of course, I am gravitating towards uh, the one with coat, but this one has a different face expression. What should I do? Buy both? <sighs> yes, I'm interested. I am indeed interested. And, okay, what else do we have? Ah, uh, another Azalene figure. This is, oh, Trisha here. Alright. There are many scale figures of her as well, and this one is a solid contender for best three. Alter has one on pre-order, but I like this one a lot as well. Okay, and here we go. To be again, right? This looks better than the Good Smile Company version, the pose at least. And Raftalia from The Rising of Shield Hero, are we getting another new season? I hope we are. The anime is not perfect, full of flaws, but I still enjoyed it. Up next, we have Ah. Uh, okay, uh, I have a few things to say about Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. This is Togu barbecue version, and also we are getting Kana as well. Okay, uh, both of these looks great, man. I love the setup and the premise, like the diorama around these two figures, very well executed. Okay, the thing with Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is that they are by KyoAni, right? The anime is by KyoAni. The weird thing is that KyoAni is giving out licenses for their figures to be made, but uh, we are not getting licensed Violet Evergarden figures. Very weird. Why not? Like, why KyoAni? Just sell out the licenses, and I'm sure people are willing to buy the figures. Up next, okay, uh, we have Elma ice cream version from Kobayashi's Dragon Maid as well. Yeah, that is indeed ice cream, just that at a distance, it looks like a tentacle to me, but maybe after the figure is painted, it won't look like one anymore. <laughs> and, okay, what else do we have? Is that all for Good Smile Arts Shanghai? Yes, that is all, and finally, one skill figure over here from... Orange Roach, well, technically too, we have Kusakabe Hikaru and Sajo Rihito from Dokyusei. Alright. Everything below, they are all action figures. Mecha Smile, Hyper X Body. Oh, yeah. 
the good small action figure of uh, of Modernia was under this HyperX body series. I just remembered the name. Mo not Modernoid. <laughs> okay. Action figures and so on. I'm not covering it, right? Modernoid are mecha stuff, as you can see. Okay, moving on to the next next section. Uh, yeah, pop up rates. We have good small company over here. Uh, Fern. <laughs> wow, the face looks really derpy. Really round face, right? I'm not sure if this figure looks good at all. Not to mention it looks pretty plain and boring. This doesn't look really good. Okay, up next, what do we have? Alright, from Delicious in Dungeon. I heard Season 2 is coming as well. But I'm stuck somewhere at Episode 10 or so. 9 or 10. Okay, uh, Izzet Sumi. Alright. And also Marcel, of course. Marcel is plenty popular. We have a few skills of her already on pre-order. And we have KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, also from Delicious in Dungeon. Uh, her name is Farlin. And this is XL. Pop-up parade XL. Now the wingspan is going to be like a meter across. I'm not sure why this is XL. Like, are they doing this at 1x4 scale? Or maybe not. This is probably normal pop up rate size if you look at the size of the head. Just that they call it XL simply because the figure is huge, right? Ah, okay. Sakamata Chloe. Uh, an update, right? Previously, she was unpainted. And then we have Chu Tan from Kawaii Kute Gomen. I'm too cute. Sorry. Well, the face expression is kind of unique for a pop up rate, and that is why I'm a bit afraid that Good Smile might screw up the face, you know? Okay, uh, next one. Oh, what is this? Bang, oh, Bang Brave, Bang Braven. I did not watch it. Uh, Sa Sawacho Ao Isami. <laughs> Let's call this Depresso figure. He looks really depressed over here. So maybe to fix his Depresso, he needs to take some Espresso. Alright, uh, what else do we have down here? I hate this so much, man. A few images and then I need to scroll down the bottom. Okay, uh, updates. These were announced previously as well. We have Hibiki from Blue Archive and also Kotori. They look really good for a pop operate, I won't lie. This looks really good, man. And then we have also... Uh, uh, oh, Eltina from The Legend of Heroes. I remember Kotobukiya making a skill figure of her. I remember that character. And then we have another Lucy figure from Fairy Tail. How many are you guys going to make, man? Okay, uh, yeah. Jujutsu Kaisen, Gojo, Satoru again. And also Suguru, Geto. Hmm. Ah, we have three Jojo figures over here. I'll just go through them really quickly. <laughs> Not the stuff I would collect, of course. Up next, this is a surprise to me, and I'm loving it. Now, how many of you watching this knows anything about Demon Bane? I certainly don't, just that all I know is that this is a really old game. Very old, we're talking about 20 years ago, year 2000s. Alter had scale figures of this character, Al Azif, from like year, year 2006 or so. Yeah, I have a scale figure by Alter. Uh, her name is Metatron, and she is also from Demon Bane. Yeah, that is how I get to know Demon Bane, you know, because uh, Demon Bane was one of my earliest series when I was just getting into collecting figures so long ago. Happy to see Al Azif getting a 1x7 one by, uh, one by skill pop up rate, yeah, L size, you know, and yeah, Orchid Seed also did a skill figure of her back then. Next one, we have pop up rate Seiyun Sky L size from Uma Musume. Nice. Uma Musume is getting a lot of attention as well. Nirachan Devil from Juto Mayonaka De Inoni. No idea what is that. Pop up rate L. No, no, this is normal pop up rate. And we have Made in Abyss SP. Pop up rate SP. Alright. Bonjour. Did I pronounce that correctly? Um, next, we have a few announcements by Good Smile, Blue Archive again. This is Nonomi, mischievous straight version. And then we have Blue Archive, Subaki, guide version. <laughs> right? And this is Saya. Okay, Saya, there has been a few skill figures of her already out there. And finally, Kasugano Sora, L size. Very nice. Come on, someone do a figure of her partially undressed. That is what. 
Yosugano Sora is all about, isn't it? Up next, more pop upgrades, but by good smile arts, Shanghai we're getting Oshino Shinobu. Yeah, only one of them by good smile arts, Shanghai. From good smile racing, good smile company as well. Now they are doing racing Mikus in pop upgrade as well. I don't know why. Yeah, this is the 2023 version, which I call uh, Ryza cosplaying as Miku version. And also, Max Factory has a pop upgrade of Kusanagi Moto uh, Motoko L size from Ghost in the Shell. Are they going to include that rectangular or more like trapezoid base for the figure? I hope they include it. Otherwise, how do we display it, right? And finally, Fat Company. Yeah, the last one on this list for pop upgrade, Naegi Makoto from Danganronpa 1 2 Reload. Alright, up next, Max Factory. Yeah, I said earlier that this is my favorite to be figure, still is after seeing uh, every single one of them. Both the pose. The pose is really attractive. I have always been a fan of no body turn around poses. I love them. And that Diorama base. But this doesn't look cheap. I'm predicting this can go up to 30,000 yen. Yeah, 25 to 30k. Up next, we have Sakamata Chloe again. Scale figure update from previous one fest. She is now painted. Very detailed. I love the outfit over there. Next one, also an update. We have Amuro Kasa from Blue Archive. <laughs> I've lost count how many Nikkei and Blue Archive figures I want from this event. Yes, this is just a bunny girl figure, which is something I complain about every week, but that, I mean, that jacket around her, that's, uh, which looks like, more like a scarf pattern of some kind, I like it. <laughs> okay, uh, oh, yes! Aru from Blue Archive. I have always wanted a scale figure of her. I want one. Wish listed. I'm going to add them to my wish list in MFC. Okay, uh, alright, Lila Dekirus from Atelier Raiza. Finally, she's getting more skill figures. Currently, there's only one or two skill figures of her. And then we have a new figure of Ho Ho, uh, Ho Sho Marine. <laughs> Ho Ho. Mo Ho Sho Marine, uh, in case you missed out the one by Good Smile, which is rare and expensive today. Maybe you can check out this one. Still in prototype stage. And then we have Alice Chan, artwork by Tonda. Oh, Tori Da Mono. Alright. Yeah, I believe that is all for Max Factory scale figures. Max Factory, they don't make many scale figures because, you know, their resources are also split among Figmas and other product lines. But let me double check. Yeah, the rest are Plamitia action figures and so on, right? Plamitia is model kit, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And oh, Plamax is the model kit. Plamitia, I'm not too sure what is that. Okay, up next, we have Kadokawa KD Call. Now, Kadokawa saw Good Smile Company's uh, Makise Kuiso and they asked themselves, how do we create a knockoff yet? It has to look a bit different and this is the end result. Well, she doesn't look too bad, but Good Smile Company's version still looks a lot better. Still, it doesn't hurt to buy one if you are a big fan of Steins Gate, right? Alright, uh, moving on to the next one, we have uh, Nishikigi. Chisato Haregi Sugata version. When is the season 2 coming out, man? I'm losing patience. I loved the anime. Up next, this is apparently Megumi light novel version. Yeah, looks very different from the anime version, right? I almost couldn't recognize her. The same thing can be said for Yunyun <laughs> light novel version. I love this uh, country bumpkin village girl look over here with the character design. I love it actually, you know. Next one, we have... Oh, I thought this figure was already on pre-order. Maybe not. Okay, uh, High Elf Archer from Goblin Slayer. And then we have... Oh, Tachibana Kanade from Angel Beats. Angel Beats, they just refuse to die for some reason. Until today, more than 10 years later, the anime ad, we still get scale figures occasionally. And then finally, we have Ronin from Fall Slender. This looks bad SAF and very photogenic. Oh, Samurai plus Cyberpunk vibes going on. Yeah, this was also an update from OneFest. It was already announced prior before this. Okay, uh, moving down, do we have anything else? Yep, Wing Company announced one single figure. I have no idea what this is. 
otowi tan from seito kai ni mo ana wa argo old school anime judging by the character design okay up next we have wonderful works yeah uh from the apokitori diaries we have mao mao uh, good smiles version which is a casual version without the makeup and so on went on pre-order for for 12,500 yen in my opinion that is a must-have i hope that this isn't too expensive because at this kneeling post this isn't a big figure and at the same time while not very detailed i love the shading paint work around her outfit yeah um next we have uh dp12 from girls france line i think fat's company has made two figures of her already and both were army army exclusives so if you were not into that i think this is not a bad purchase at all i like that semi-transparent look to her dress yeah very lovely indeed next one we have hatsune miku uh yeah this is the vacation style announced in previous events she is now finally painted reminds me of the vacation version of saber by aniplex a few years ago and i believe that is all for wonderful works yep annulus has one single action figure here of bridget and that is all moving on to the next figure brand fats company they have a lot of stuff as well okay the first one here i like this so much but i have a feeling that this will be an army army exclusive yeah uh, vsk94 christmas eve detective version <laughs> christmas eve detective okay uh i like it a lot but this is likely to go for 27 to thirty thousand yen yeah i am that confident that she will cost that much 27 to 30k that is a very narrow range okay up next we have cow bikini version of pa15 from girls front line how many of them already i think three or four pa15 figures already by fats company and they managed to screw up every single one of them yeah uh once again quality control issues related to paint work the sculpting is fine the face expression and everything very well executed but it is always the painting department where fats company messes up please get this done right yeah up next we have uh to touring again german again yeah sounds german to me from azalin probably an exclusive too right i mean i mean exclusive and we have a metal rod shoved right up her ass over there very nice location to put a metal rod uh up next we have a sanagi from azalane oh micro bikini and lolly lovely combination i love it <laughs> okay what else do we have over here ah shimakaze from azalane this looks really good well if you could put aside the two gods over there yeah this looks really good chinese dress right yeah looks like she's wearing chinese dress and then we have uwi from blue archive everyone is carrying a suitcase among all of the blue archive figures i've noticed it already just like girls front line okay uh next one we have two figures of sophia f showing this is cow bikini version artwork by nadare and oh, <laughs> milk is she pumping milk straight out from her tds man <laughs> the huge tank of milk over there and then we have this version over here cheerleader version very nice under book over there art by nadare as well when sophia f showing is so popular for some reason vertex making figures of her and then freeing as well i have no idea what is going on over here and then up next we have uh admire vega from uma musume which i do think will be ami ami exclusive too yeah same thing for this one asian flash from uma musume we are getting all these rods supporting the figure because of their poses uh run and win nice nature uma musume I have always found the naming of Uma Musume characters to be really weird. Yeah, like nice nature. Yeah. Uh, shall I put a figure somewhere with a nice scenery or something in nature? Uh, this sounds so stupid. Okay. Uh, next one here. Okay. Uh, Mr. CB. <laughs> Her name is Mr. CB. No, uh, CB in my native language means C-U-N-T. Yes. 
<laughs> I'm not sure if I can say that word on YouTube, but yeah, that is what it means in my native language. Okay, uh, next one we have Mine Chan from uh, okay, Arms Note. I've always loved the concept of Arms Note. It feels like uh, a slightly better version of Girls Front Line. Yeah. I believe that is all. Okay, the last figure over here. Uh, Michinoku Komago from Seitokai Nimo Anawa Aru. Okay. Removing her stockings. Oh, we have more over here. Fat company announcing a lot of stuff, man. Atelier Raiza. They already have one. They are making another one. Uh, this is Koketsu Kanan from Kanan Samawa Akumade Chogoi. Cowgirl. There's so many things I don't know, man. I buy figures simply because I like their character design. Okay, yeah, that is all for Fat Company. A lot of figures, man. Okay, and here up next we have Solar Rain. I like this figure so much. This barge from Azalane. Yeah, uh, was it? What was the, any game? Any game made a figure of her was really cheap. Like can get one for seven hundred and fifty Chinese yuan for the light, uh, light armor version, of course. Heavy armor version, heavy equipment version was slightly more expensive and slightly harder to find. But I like this one solely for her face expression. For someone who doesn't really focus on Azalane, I am interested in this figure. Yeah. So Larin is a Chinese figure brand, by the way. And up next, oh, yes. This is very similar to the BRS figure, the very same one that Good Smile screwed up. The pose is a bit different, but the setup is a bit similar, where she is either sitting or standing on a cannon. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm keeping an eye on this one. I used to love BRS a lot in the past. Nowadays, I don't focus on BRS that much in my collection. But Solarin has my attention with this one, which listed. Up next, we have, uh, okay, this is a color red from Art by Asagon, right? Yeah, I think so. Original art character. For some reason, I feel I'm looking at, at, at an Azalean character. Yeah, it feels that way to me. I love that bow, man. The crossbow and everything in this figure. Up next, ah, Blue Archive again, Miyu. Mm, I might get one. I mean, this is a mini diorama. We have a bucket on the ground. That base over there with rubber rubber ducks, right? Yeah. And that rifle case. Yeah, I like it a lot. The main figure is a bit plain. The outfit is a bit plain. Looks like swimsuit to me, but... Yeah, it is swimsuit. Anyways, I'm keeping an eye as well. I haven't updated my MFC profile in a long time. I need to update and add all of my new wish list over there, which I haven't done yet. Okay, we have Shinjo Akane from Gridman Universe. And also, of course, Takarada Rika, they are one set, right? I like this a lot more than the Zozo Black collection version by Union Creative. Like, that is black all the way, a bit boring to look at. This is a lot more flashy. I like flashy figures. Up next, oh, another one, Minami Yume from Gridman Universe. This is so much better. Then whatever Union Creative did. Okay, uh, yeah, Etile Raiza, right? Yep, Rizaline Stout swimsuit version. How many figures of her do we need? <laughs> Next one, yeah, Claudia. At least Claudia is getting some justice because everyone makes figures of, no, uh, Rizaline Stout but ignores the others. The same thing can be said for Lila Dekirus, yeah. Man, I'm just enjoying the sculpting around her body her waist over here you know all these muscle lines i love it up next ah uh, sengan kagura I, I could recognize that face over there that is yumi's face yep okay and then we have more sengan kagura stuff uh, asuka swimsuit version and finally i think this is the last figure by solar rain yuyuko saigyoji from toho project which is a skip for me we have more figure companies at the bottom, I'm certain. Yeah, uh, Luminous Box, which is, which is also a Chinese brand, I think. I think it is a Chinese brand. The first one here, this is Takarada Rika from Gridman Universe. It looks a bit boring, actually. And the second one, you know, when I first saw the picture, I thought this was Yuki Nagato from Suzumiya Haruhi no Yuzu. But no, this is Megumin. What? <laughs> yeah, it is hard to tell when the figure is unpainted. 
This is from the spin-off Konosoba Sekai ni Bakuen Wo. The spin-off wasn't that good, but season 3 of Konosoba was a 10 out of 10. I love it. Yeah, only two figures from Luminous Box, right? And lastly, the last figure brand for today, Nekoyome, which I think is a Chinese brand as well. I actually do have a list, a chart of which is Chinese brand, but I did not even pay attention to it. Okay, all three are from Nekopara. So we have Cinnamon Red Screen version, and then uh, Maple Red Screen version, and finally this announcement over here, Chocola and Vanilla 10th Anniversary. Very popular, from what I know, very popular in Japan. So I'm not too surprised over here. I'm not sure if I will ever collect Nekopara stuff. And that is all for Smile Fest 2024. The big winners would be Blue Archive, Goddess of Victory Nikkei, and also Nier Automata. Right? And then, uh, followed by Uma Musume and Azalene, I suppose. Girls Frontline as well. FGO, no new figures. We only have updates of that. Uh, Melusine figure that Morgan did not get any update at all. So no new FGO stuff in this figure event. And I think I'm fine with that because I'm starting to switch my focus a bit when it comes to collecting figures. With FGO figures, instead of going out and buying every single thing, I'm starting to limit things to what I really like. Like, no, uh, Alter Ego Lambda by Alter. Yeah, that one has been released a few months ago. I'm waiting for her to become slightly cheaper before buying one. But yeah, I'm going to cut down on the number of FGO stuff I buy and get my hands on all these. Yeah, Azalene. Uh, Azalene not so much, but I'm going to get my hands on Blue Archive and Nikkei stuff a lot. Yeah. So this event, while being a small one, is very painful for my wallet. Which one made it into your wish list? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you found this video to be helpful or informative or even entertaining, please give this video a like and subscribe to this channel for anime figure content every week. This coming Thursday, a figure review. Yeah, Animasters Florence from New World Cloud. The review will be up this Thursday. I have already scheduled it, by the way, fully edited and uploaded. So do check out that video when I publish it. Uh, that will be a short review. I'm estimating under 9 minutes. And when a figure review is really short, it means that it is a good figure. Because there is not much to complain about. Yeah. Until then, I'll see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.